Hello and welcome to Settledor's World of Warcraft Guides. This is one this oh, sorry, this one's gonna be another one on our mages currently. This one is going to be Fire Mage Specking. We're going to run through PvE fires starting at primes going to miners, and then we're gonna run through PvP fires starting at primes going to miners, with a summary of each at the end as we run through it. Now as I say in the beginning of all my videos now, keep in mind this is merely a suggestion. The best thing for you is to tailor it to your own playstyle. And there goes my phone again. Sorry, folks. So, keeping that in mind, and keeping in mind we're talking about PvE, let's go through the glyphs for the first time that Fire Mages would be interested in. Uh, fireball. Increases crit chance of your Fireball spell by 5%. I'm sorry you're not going to be using Fireball as a Fire Mage. Get that! God, Blizzard, you are weird. Um, next glyph. This is why you're not going to be using Fireball, because they removed the Fireball's damage over time component. Blizzard, I will never understand some of the things you do. However, your glyph of Frost Firebolt will be much more useful. If you, sorry, your Frost Firebolt will be, if you grab Glyph of Frost Firebolt, which increases damage of your Frost Firebolt by 15%, which is ridiculously awesome on its own, but now it deals 3% additional damage over 12 seconds. Not only that, but it stacks up to 3 times, so that's 9% bonus damage on top of an increased Frost Firebolt's damage. But... Uh, it no longer slows movement speed, but that shouldn't be that big of an issue considering most bosses aren't affected by that anyway, and you don't really need to worry about movement speed in PvE because the tank's tanking it anyway. So, this will allow you to get another burn effect on the target, which, if you remember your mastery, it increases the damage of burns, so it will increase the damage of this burn. Also, it goes well with combustion, because that gets factored into combustion's damage. So, it is ridiculous if you don't pick up Frost Firebolt, and the way you fire DPS is spam that Frost Firebolt, baby. Ooh, yeah. You'll see my Frost Fire... or, sorry, you'll see my Fire Rotation video. There will be a link to my... PvE fire video, my PvP fire spec video, my fire rotation video, and also uh, probably my blog, which is sethledore.blogspot.com. I would highly suggest you follow me there and check out some of my other opinions that I have on things like glyphing, mages, and stuff like that. Whatever the current topic is of the video that's coming out. Anyway, back to the glyphs. Definitely take Frost Firebolt. Ridiculously important. Ignore Fireball. You're never going to use it once you get Frost Firebolt. Sorry, it's true. Next we have Living Bomb, which will increase the damage of your Living Bomb by 3%. If you remember in our Fire Talent Tree, we picked up a talent that would increase the damage of Living Bomb by 15% already. Plus, it gains bonuses from all our damage increases, like from Fire Power, a flat 3% fire damage increase. So if we can increase Living Bomb by an additional 3%, that's crazy. 3% on top of 15% on top of another 3% from another talent. Percent over percent over percent, your brain's going to explode at some point. Mm, water. So, you know, it's just gravy on gravy on gravy on gravy, you know, you're just going to clog those arteries with so much bonus damage, it's ridiculous. So, you definitely want to take this one, it's really awesome. Not only will it increase the damage over time, which is increased again by your mastery, but it will increase the uh, explosion damage of Living Bomb, which is multiplied by however many targets it hits, multiplied by how many of our targets the other two bombs you have going at the same time hits, and they'll all hit the same additional target, which causes stacking bonus percentage damage. So it's just ridiculous how much AoE damage, how much damage in general Fire Mage can do. I hope you're understanding a little bit now why I like Fire so much. <laughs> Uh, next, we have Glyph of Molten Armor, which grants Molten Armor an additional 2% Critical Strike chance. Critical Strike is very important for a Fire Mage because it will apply your Ignite, and it also procs your Hot Streak, which is very, very, very vital to a Fire Mage. So that is always a good thing. Also, you're going to look at Glyph of Pyroblast, which will increase the Critical Strike chance of Pyroblast, which is very nice because if you can make Pyroblast crit, that begets another Hot Streak. Very cool. Uh, Power Blast also does a ridiculous amount of damage, so if you can make Power Blast crit, that means it will do even more ridiculous damage. So, that's always a good thing. Uh, let's see, what else is in our wonderful little Prime Glyph list? You could look at Glyph of Mage Armor if you have a lot of mana issues, but if you followed my spec guide, your Scorch no longer costs mana, and that is what you do when you have mana issues till you have enough mana for something else. Uh, you could switch to Mage Armor, as I suggest doing in my Fire Mage Rotation video. However, I personally choose to opt out of that and spam Scorch till I have enough mana to do a full rotation of everything else. So, that is on you whether you'd like to do Mage Armor or not. Hmm... Water is so good. 
All right, so I would highly suggest for your Prime Glyphs as a PvE Fire Mage, ignore Fireball. You're going to want to grab Glyph of Frost Firebolt, absolutely 100% guarantee. You're going to want to grab Glyph of Living Bomb, absolute 100% guarantee. And you are going to want to grab Molten Armor over Pyroblast. Why, you ask? Because... Getting Molten Armor will allow you to get more Instant Pyroblast. Why buff a spell that you're not going to be using if you can increase the rate at which you're most likely going to be using it instead? It, also, it already does a ridiculous amount of damage. If you followed my spec, you've already got good crit. Plus, Molten Armor is giving you overall crit for everything, including Pyroblast. Just not as much as it would be giving Pyroblast on its own. So I would say take Molten Armor. It's overall going to be better for you. Um, so yeah, recommendation, Prime Glyph of Frost Firebolt, Prime Glyph of Living Bomb, Prime Glyph of Molten Armor, absolutely, that's what you want. Ah, uh, let's hit Majors, yeah, Majors. Alright, let's see, Majors, we got Major Glyph of Blast Wave, which causes slowing effect to last an additional one second. Big whoop, not really going to be worried about that, we use Blast Wave for AoE damage, not slowing purposes in PvE. Glyph of Dragon's Breath produces cooldown of Dragon's Breath by 3 seconds. Usually not close enough to use Dragon's Breath in a PvE scenario because if you're too close, you're probably going to be getting hit by cleaves. That's no fun. So pass on that. Glyph of Evocation, very cool, gives you health back. However, you have healers for that. Just keep in mind that it's there because we may be going back and grabbing it because there's nothing else good to grab. Also, you could look at Blink increasing the distance on that isn't a bad thing. Uh, movement increase in invisibility, not the best idea for PvE, it's not going to be that important. Reducing cooldown of mana shield by 2 seconds, again, not going to be that cool, as you shouldn't really be using mana shield, because it eats up your mana, less mana means less DPS. Uh, simply because you can't cast other spells. Don't have slow, don't have arcane power, don't have ice barrier, uh, pfft, ice block, you're not going to be frost noving. Um, Glyph of Polymorph. This is pretty cool. I would highly recommend all mages to get this, especially since there's not really that much for a fire mage in majors, uh, anyway. Basically, this will remove all damage over times on the, uh, target that gets Polymorph. That's pretty tight because, um, say DK Pestilences before you get your Polymorph off, and then you Polymorph. Oh, look at all that wasted mana, and now you look like a tard because your Polymorph isn't working. Hmm, who's gonna get yell yelled at? The DK or you? I bet it's you. Now with this, you won't get yelled at. You'll just remove the dots, and no one will be none the wiser. So, pretty easy. Uh, I would highly recommend grabbing it, as you don't have anything else really to put in your majors viably. So, as a summary for Fire PvE Major Glyphs, highly recommend grabbing Glyph of Evocation. Use that to help out your healers, as well as yourself if you're low on health, and the healers are low on mana. Highly recommend grabbing Glyph of Polymorph to make yourself look like less of a tard because of someone else's mistakes, not your own. And finally, that leaves you with one open Major Glyph spot, which really you can do whatever the hell you want with. There's not really anything that uber. I would recommend, out of everything here, either grab Blink or Dragon's Breath if you do find yourself using Dragon's Breath, which I never do in a PvE scenario. So I personally would grab Blink. So my recommendation for Majors would be Glyph of Blink, Glyph of Evocation, and Glyph of Polymorph for a major glyph setup for pve fire mages yeah not even a single fire glyph in there blizzard what are you doing first the fireball thing and now majors borked for fire mages you're awesome what can i say all right miners miners are usually crap for everybody but there is one interesting one for mages which is going to be glyph of mirror image which causes your mirror images to cast fireball in this case now that's pretty cool because they will gain bonuses of fire damage that you have so their damage output will be increased based on your damage output being increased uh... if they're casting fire spells now this may have been hot fixed i had someone else test it out for me as you can obviously sen see since i don't have this particular glyph but there was a slight damage increase that may be a bug or uh, that is the way it is in the game they may hot fix it or have hot fixed it by the time you're watching this but I would highly recommend it anyway simply because it makes sense and there's not really any other cool miners to grab I would also highly recommend grabbing the miner of slow fall because if you recall a fight in ZA um, God, I can't even remember his name the bird dude with the wind and crap there was a lot of fall damage in there also if you can uh, call on your intelligence from cataclysm 
the first boss in Throne of Tides has some fall damage component, as well as the second boss. If you get hit by the uh, water pump, and then you get hit on the ground again, you will indeed die, unless you can manage to slow fall yourself, or that particular person. Also, in raids, if there is a fall damage component, this is pretty nice, because now you don't have to pull the healer off of her his or her job of healing to levitate that person. Guess what? Mage can step up and say, yo boss, I got the slow fall, that's what's up. And he'll be like, oh my god, you're the best mage ever, I want to kiss and hug you. Whoa, dude, I don't roll that way. How about just toss me some ember silk? All right, done. There you go. Got yourself some free ember silk because you can slow fall without a reagent. Bam, you're awesome. Uh, with that, arcane brilliance, mana cost reduced by 50%, no big deal. Conjuring mana cost reduced by 50%, no big deal. Armor duration increased by 30 minutes, no big deal. And penguin and monkey polymorph change, no big deal. So really do whatever the hell you want with the third minor, which leaves my suggestions for miners... Minor Glyph of Slowfall, Minor Glyph of Mirage, Mirror Image, and whatever you'd like for the third slot. As far as PvE Majors for a Fire Mage, I would suggest Glyph of Polymorph, Glyph of Evocation, and Glyph of Blink. And for Primes for Fire Mages, I would recommend Glyph of Frost, Firebolt, Living Bomb, and Molten Armor. Again, I will remind you that these are all simply my suggestions as far as what I've found to work pretty damn well. Feel free to customize and tailor them to your choice and your fitting play style, as that is the only way you will do optimal. Now, that was for PvE. Let's hit up PvP fire glyphing now. Again, not going to be using Fireball, because it doesn't have a burn effect. 15% increased damage on Frost Firebolt should be enough reason for you to grab this glyph anyway. Not only that, it allows you to put another burn on a target. An extra dot on someone in PvP is ridiculously important. More sources of damage on the target means less effective healing overall is going to be, and plus, you can still be doing damage to multiple people without actually looking at them. So that's fantastic. Same thing applies to Living Bomb damage increase, as did when we were talking about it as PvE. It's going to be increased damage overall across the board to every component of Living Bomb on top of all the other bonuses to Living Bomb you already have. Plus, you'll be having Living Bomb on most likely more than one person in uh, pretty much any of the BGs, with the exception of maybe an AB where there's only one guy defending the flag, etc., etc. So pretty damn badass to grab that one. The Molten Armor, you should be having Molten Armor up in PvP anyway, because if you grab the Fire Starter talent that I recommended in my PvP spec guide, which there will be a link to at the end of the video, uh, you're going to be having Molten Armor up so you can cast Scorch while moving, so the increased critical strike on that will increase the proc chance of Pyroblast, thus resulting in you doing more damage and dying less because of it. So, obvious why you want to grab Glyph of Molten Armor. Increased crit chance on Pyroblast is pretty nice, but again, same thing we talked about and PvE applies to PvP in this case scenario, so you definitely want to grab that. Also, with the Mage Armor Glyph, you don't want to worry about mana in a PvP scenario as much as in PvE, and if we didn't pick it up in PvE, that means we're definitely not grabbing it in PvP. So, for Primes, I would recommend the same three Primes for PvP as I did for PvE. Frost, Firebolt, Living Bomb, Molten Armor. Now that we got that craziness out of the way, let's head to Major Glyphs for PvP Fire Mages. We've got Blast Wave, which is increasing the slowing duration. That's a pretty damn awesome glyph for PvP. That's going to cause them to be slower longer. Very important for your survivability as well as others. So I would recommend looking at that one heavily. Also, the increased range on Blink is a good thing too. You get 5 yards away from the target uh, in the same amount of time to Blink. So again, that's a good thing. Also, the reduced cooldown on Dragon's Breath is going to be very much more interesting in PvP than PvE as you will be using Dragon's Breath in PvP, unlike PvE. Uh, this is pretty nice because you'll have a Disorient up every 17 instead of 20 seconds. Also, a Frontal Cone damage is never a bad thing. So definitely keep that in mind when you're picking. Also, Glyph of Evocation, very vital in every PvP Mage spec, as giving yourself 40% of your health back is no joke at all. Um, Glyph of Frost Nova, yes, you could look at that grabbing it, but... It's a frost spell. Fire Mage doesn't really jive. It's just kind of how I'm feeling. That's my suggestion. I mean, you could grab it. Yes, it is not absolutely a good glyph for PvP, but I'm personally saying throw it out the window because you're going to be using Blast Wave anyway. Even though they are on separate cooldowns, that's just my feeling on it. Uh, glyph of Invisibility, a little more viable in PvP, but still doesn't beat out some of the other glyphs we've looked at. Uh, allows you to move faster while invisible, so you'd be able to get into the flag room and out of the flag room a little faster. You'd be able to get away faster, etc., etc. Not a bad thing, just not high pry. Uh, mana Shield shouldn't be using unless you're arcane. 
don't have slow, don't have arcane power, don't have ice barrier, ice block. Uh, you could debate that. Again, that's just along the same lines of using the uh, Frost Nova Glyph. Uh, and finally, Glyph of Polymorph. Glyph of Polymorph you actually don't want to use in PvP because... Uh, because the only time you'll be polymorphing as anything but an arcane mage will be on something that is pestering you and is not getting hit. Because if it's getting hit, there's no point in polymorphing it. And if it's getting damaged by dots, then the warlock that's trying to kill him is going to be very pissed off if you have this glyph and polymorph him. So, keep that in mind when you're polymorphing. Uh, primarily when you going to polymorph is when one of your friends or the healer is going to be getting hit or yourself by someone who is going unchecked. So keep that in mind. I would highly recommend passing over this as you don't want to piss someone else on your team off because they're trying to kill that dude. So that leaves us with recommendations for PvP fire mages being Glyph of Blast Wave, Glyph of Dragon's Breath, Glyph of Evocation. That is what I use. That is my personal opinion. I would say debate between either Glyph of Blast Wave and Glyph of Blink, because one extra second on slows is not that impressive, but then again, five more yards isn't that impressive either. So trade one minor for one minor, bonus, etc., etc. Uh, Dragon's Breath three seconds is definitely going to be very helpful. Having this that disorient up three seconds sooner is going to be very vital. Uh, it'll allow you to interrupt healers, it'll allow you to interrupt other casters more often, and it's a nice little bonus damage, plus it can get like a pet off your ass if he's chasing you down. And then Glyph of Evocation is the, uh, pretty much it's logical why you want to take that. 40% heal, no reason for that. Uh, as for miners, same thing goes for PvP as did PvE, the miner... Mi Glyph Mirror Image is going to be nice because it'll increase damage output, as well as if the player you're fighting is unattentive, it will take them an extra second or two to tell which one is the real one, as they'll be casting similar-looking spells to you. Granted, they're casting Fireball, not Frost Firebolt, but hey, if the guy's not paying attention, might buy you a second or two. Plus, the damage increase is nice. On top of that, Glyph of Slowfall, again, very nice, because you can go from Lumber Mill to Blacksmith, Blacksmith to Mine and AB very easily. Other little places you can sneak in that Slowfall to get you places faster. And different BGs, always a good thing. On top of that, the two cosmetic ones are indeed just cosmetic. Increased armor duration isn't going to matter, you'll be dying too often. Arcane Brilliance, maybe you could debate grabbing that because you get dispelled. And Conjuring, again, not going to be that big of a deal. If you have time to eat, it's in an AV. Isle of Conquest, Tolbrad, something like that. And you could debate using that because it'll um, reduce the mana cost of Conjuring your mana gem, but... You'll usually be out of combat to do that anyway. So, minor recommendations. Glyph of Mirror Image, Glyph of Slow Fall, Glyph of whatever the hell you want for the third one. Now, for the summary of PvP Fire Mage Glyphs. I recommend four minor PvP Fire Mage Glyphing. Glyph of Mirror Image, Glyph of Slow Fall, Glyph of whatever the hell you want. For major PvP Fire Mage Glyphing, I recommend Glyph of Blast Wave, Glyph of Dragon's Breath, Glyph of Evocation. If you don't like Glyph of Blast Wave, I would then recommend Glyph of Blink. And finally, for your Prime Glyphs for PvP Fire Mage Glyphing, I would recommend Frost Firebolt, Living Bomb, and Molten Armor. Now, again, I will remind everyone who is watching these videos that these are only my personal suggestions and everything should be tailored to your personal playstyle, otherwise you will not be playing optimally. If this fits your personal playstyle, I'm glad great minds think alike. So, again, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please thumb up, favorite, subscribe, and tell your friends about me. I'm trying to hit a little more subscribers before I go for my partnership, which will be soon right around the corner. Thank, every thank you, everyone, for supporting me. Thank you, everyone who's just coming in watching my videos. Every view counts. Thank you so much. Go ahead and comment if there was a clerical error on here. Uh, go ahead and talk amongst each other about, oh, hey, I think this would actually be a better glyph, and this is why. I might read it, say, hey, that's cool. Maybe someone will say, oh, that's a good point, but why don't blah, blah, blah. Try and make friends. You know, that's what comments are there for. Trolling and making friends. That's how life is. All right. Um, and that's that. So this has been Sethildor on the server Blade's Edge, in the Guild Sacrilege, on the Character Arctic Shatter, on the topic of PvE and PvP Fire Mage Glyph Setup. Thank you for watching. It's been real fun. Can't wait to put another one out for you guys.